Chinese food and Indian food remain to be two of my favorite cuisines of all time. So I figure why not try adding one of my favorite Indian ingredients to one of my favorite Chinese dishes. Mapo tofu paneer just sounds really tasty to me. And I will admit a lot of the times I will come up with a dish and try making something just because it's kind of fun to say. Mapo tofu paneer. Dealing with store-bought paneer, the first thing we need to do is soften it a little bit. So we take some freshly boiled water and then pour that over the paneer. Say hi to my dog, everybody. And since we're gonna soften it with hot water, I figure why not flavor the paneer a little bit with some lapsang su chang, which is some Chinese pine smoked tea. It's really, really smoky and it's really, really conducive to savory flavors. If you are a mezcal or a scotch person, I highly recommend this tea for you. Bringing out a bigger bowl now because I didn't take liquid displacement into my calculations when soaking this cheese because why would I? That would have only been the logical thing to do. Now I didn't really set a time for this in any way, I just soaked the cheese for as long as I cooked the rest of the dish. It's only just boiled water so you're not going to overcook the cheese in any way and since you're just soaking it in tea, you're not really going to oversteep it. I will be honest, I wish I actually added more tea to this because I did taste some flavor, but it was not strong enough to overpower the uh, mapo tofu that I added to later on. So I would probably say a cup of tea and maybe a quart of water when soaking paneer. I'm making this all up as I go along. So it's a process and you're just along for the ride. Now there are many types of tofu, but in Western grocery stores, they're usually just separated between like firm, extra firm, soft and silken. And for this dish, for any mapo tofu dish, you are going to want to use extra firm tofu. Chopped, rinsed and cubed, if you want to make sure you get all of that kind of soy flavor out of it, you can also do a preliminary boil of the tofu. I didn't do it, I just gave my tofu a soak as you can see here. Just like with the paneer, just keeping it in some warm water until you are ready to add it to the rest of the dish. This is what silken tofu looks like. It's good for desserts and it's good for smoothies, but you don't want to use it for this dish because there is nothing about mapo tofu pudding that sounds appealing to me. Because mapo tofu is such an iconic dish, there are actually variations of it that span not only just within China itself. For example, Cantonese mapo tofu is much less spicy. There's also a Japanese version, since they tend to like that dish a lot as well. That version tends to be not spicy at all. To be quite honest, I'm not really sure which version is the one that I make, but it is pretty spicy. The thing you need to do is fry up your chilies and your Szechuan peppercorns together to make kind of like a pasty powder. Fry up the chilies first so they toast really nice and then add your Szechuan peppercorns both the green and the red kind in and stir that around till you can smell its lemony fragrance shortly after you need to remove that from the heat because if your Szechuan peppercorns burn and they can do that pretty easily they will make everything bitter and so you have to discard it and try again now normally you would chop these until you get this toasty gritty powder but since I have a mortar and pestle and it saves a little bit of time I just pound it all and grind it all in here respectfully. Now this is your mala base, so this is pretty much going to be responsible for that tingly sensation and the spiciness of the entire dish. Yes, the doubanjang and the duojiao that we're going to add to it later is also both of those things, but this is like the prime source of your that buzzy tingly spiciness of the mapo tofu. Now I'm using ground beef for this recipe, but you can use ground pork or ground lamb based on whatever you would like. I do not recommend making a vegan mapo tofu just based solely on taking out the meat from this dish. I do have a vegan mapo tofu recipe that is actually really good, but I do find that when restaurants just remove meat from a basic mapo tofu recipe, it just doesn't taste very good. Szechuan cuisine is also actually really famous for their pickles, but since I don't have any homemade Szechuanese pickles available, I'm using my duojiao, which is Hunanese, and they are fermented chopped chilies. It's got ginger and garlic in there, which is what the original Szechuan recipe calls for, so it kind of works. This is la topanjang. It is a spicy fermented broad bean paste and is responsible for the salty flavors of the dish. This particular jar is Taiwanese and is not as spicy as the real thing, 
but it is the one in my house that is open, so I'm using it. This is the Szechuanese version of the same ingredient. If you can find some, I highly recommend you get it. It is saltier, it is spicier, and it doesn't care about your feelings. So you're gonna mix both of those two ingredients in with your beef, and then finally add some of the mala powder to it. Stir fry all of that together along with some broth. I'm using some superior stock that I had made before because why not? It makes literally everything better. But even if you don't have stock, all the ingredients that are in there already are really, really spicy. So you could just get away with, with using plain water, which is what a lot of people do. And it's still a great and delicious dish using just water. I realized just now that I said spicy when I meant to say salty. Oh well. Braise the tofu so that it can get a head start in absorbing all of that flavor and then gradually little by little add in some cornstarch slurry, mixing it in and then letting it heat up a little bit before adding some more in so that it can get to a thickness that you like. You want it to be able to sit on top of rice nicely but still easily absorb into the rice. Now for the final step when it's all said and done turn off the heat and then mix in your paneer. Too much heat will make your paneer get really hard and solid but since we've softened it up already it kind of has has this texture of kind of like firm-ish mozzarella. It's actually really cool to eat this alongside really soft tofu. It's kind of like a textural difference even though it's kind of shaped the same. After the paneer has been added, if you feel like it could use a little bit more salt, add in a little dash of light soy sauce, that is totally optional, and then finally finish it off with a touch of Chinese black vinegar, which I, in my personal opinion, is not optional. I even gave mine a little bit of a hit of spicy chili oil because I wanted more fragrance out of my mapa tofu. Serve over rice and garnish with cilantro. I really like cilantro for this. You can use green onion if you don't like cilantro. And then finally, as a personal touch and preference, dust it with a final hit of that mala powder so that it can be even more buzzy and numbing and spicy based on how you like it. I used a lot. This was a very spicy dish. I got, it got me sweating. It was so good. If you're a person that really likes the texture of tofu, this might be a little bit jarring to you. Paneer is a cheese, and so it has the texture of a soft cheese when it's heated up like this. So maybe a mix of them might not work out very well, but I think everybody should try, at very least, making one that is just paneer so they kind of know what they're getting. I think the cheese in this just makes for a great and different experience. Not anything that I've had before because, you know, traditional Chinese cooking doesn't have a lot of cheese in it. But at the same time, Indian cooking is really conducive to spicy flavors. So it just kind of makes sense that this works together. The basic things that I would have done differently in this case would be I would make a much more concentrated tea bath for the paneer when I'm warming it up and soaking it in the tea. Show off how sweaty this dish is making me, but it's not really reading on the camera very much, but I, I was dripping by the time I finished this bowl. I'm really interested to see how you guys like this. I hope somebody tries it, and I hope somebody who's used to cooking Indian food especially gives it a try and tells me what their thoughts are. If you do, please let me know in the comments what you think. I would, again, just, I'm very curious to know.